Okay, today we are going to go over CC1 3.2.3 Review and Preview. Before we start, you'll notice that I have a large number line off to the side that I drew. This is to help me with the problems that I might need help with. So, problem 118. Solve the following expressions. Show your work. Well, part A, we know how to add decimals. So I'm going to make sure to line up my decimal point. 3 plus 0 is 3. 2 plus 9 is 11. 8 plus 1 is 9. 1 plus nothing is 1. It equals 19 and 13 hundredths. Part B, this is when I might start using that number line. So, part B, I start at negative 6, and I subtract 9. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which would be negative 15. Okay, now really, you'll notice that it's it's almost like 6 plus 9 because that's 15. So the way I can think of it is, well, if it's 6 minus 9, negative 6 minus 9, it's almost like I'm adding the two numbers. But I have to remember, it's going to be negative. It's not going to be a positive number. I'm starting at a negative and I'm going backwards. That means it's going to be to the left. Okay. Part C. Eight minus three minus four. So I find eight on my number line. It's right here. So I subtract three. So remember with subtraction, Go one, two, three to the left. Then I'm going four more to the left because I'm subtracting. So one, two, three, four. So my answer is going to be one. Eight minus three is five minus four is one. Okay, part D, I start at zero, I subtract three, so one, two, three, I end up at negative three. Okay, it does say to show your work, if you're using a number line, that, that's your work. Okay. Part E, I start at 15 and I subtract 20. Well, I know that it takes 5 to get to 20 from 15. So, but I know 15 is smaller than 20, so it's going to be a negative number. And it's going to be negative 5. Okay, and I could do I could do that on the number line. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, negative 5. Okay. Part F, find negative 9 and add 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is 5. I could also think of it, well, it's kind of like subtracting four, 9 from 14. So 14 minus 9 is 5. Okay, 11 fifteenths minus 7 twentieths. I need to find a least common multiple. To do this, I'm going to use that ladder method. But instead of just finding greatest common factor, it'll also allow me to find least common multiple. So 
I'm going to do this way up here at the top. So I have 15 and 20. I know 5 goes into it. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Okay. I know 5 is my greatest common factor, but I want my least common multiple. So I'm going to circle all the ones on the outside and say, okay, well, what are all those multiplied together? 5 times 3 is 15 times 4 is 60. So my least common multiple is 60. So I have to make equivalent fractions. We know from up here, 15 times 4 is 60. I drew my denominator wrong. 15 times 4, 11 times 4 is 44. So I have 44 sixtieths minus 7 twentieths to get 60. I multiply 20 by 3. 7 times 3 is 21. 44 minus 21. 4 minus 1 is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. It is 23 sixtieths. Then, last but not least, start at 5, subtract 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's negative 4. Okay. So solve the number puzzles below. If I add 9 to my number, I get 6. What is my number? So... I don't know what my number is, but if I add nine to it, I get six. So I need to think of, well, what's the opposite of adding nine? It's, it's subtracting nine. So six minus nine, well, I might need to use my number chart or number line. So six minus nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is negative three, and I can double check that. Does negative three plus nine give me six? The answer is yes. So their number is negative three. Okay, part B. If I start at negative five on a number line and end up at negative eight, so here's, here's negative 5, here's negative 8. This is where they ended up. Well, what direction did they move? Well, you moved left, and it was 1, 2, 3 spaces. So you moved left 3. So part C, if I moved up 8 and then moved back down 8, what can you tell me about my ending position? It is the same as the starting position. Okay. Problem 120. You can see in the examples below that not all number lines increase by one unit from mark to mark. We need to sketch the number lines on our paper. They're already here. And fill in the missing numbers. So, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6. We're counting by 2s. This next one, negative 15, negative 10. It looks like we're counting by 5s. If we are, negative 5 would be next, plus 5 is 0. Plus 5 is 5, 10, 15, 20. We were correct. It is by 5. Down here, negative 7, 0. That means I'm counting by 7. So 7, 14, 21, 28. If 
I go backwards, the opposite of 14 is negative 14. For this one in the corner, we are counting by 2,000. So I would have 2,000 and 4,000 on one side, and negative 4,000 goes on the other side of negative 2,000. Problem 121. We have a triangular flower bed. Needs a thin metal border all the way around it. The sides are 7 feet, 6 feet, and 9 feet long. So if I draw a picture. So I have 7 feet, 6 feet, and 9 feet. I want a border. Okay, which means that I have to find the perimeter. The perimeter is all the sides added together. So 9 plus 7 is 16 plus 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry my 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we need 22 feet. Okay. feet of border. Okay. If borders cost $8.75 per yard and only whole numbers of yards can be purchased, how much would the border cost? Well, if we have feet, we need it in yards. We're going from something larger or smaller to larger. I'm going to divide. So 22 divided by 3. 3 goes into 2, 0 times. 3 goes into 22, 7, which is 21. I have one left over. I, I have to buy a whole amount. I can't just buy seven point something yards. So because it's because it's a portion, I have to round up, okay? Because if I went with just seven, it'd be too little. Seven yards would be less than what I need. So I need eight yards times $8.75. I'm going to set this up this way. Eight times five is 40. Eight times seven is, well, seven times seven is 49, plus another seven, which would be 56, plus four is 60. 8 times 8 is 64 plus 6. It would cost them $70. Okay. Problem 122. One of the topics you will review in this course is reading graphs. Look at the graph below. This graph shows positive and negative values on both axes. It divides the plane into four parts, or quadrants. It is called a four-quadrant graph. The quadrants are numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4 in a counterclockwise manner, as shown. Okay, part A. The coordinates, the x and y values for point A, are negative 4, comma, 3. Explain how these numbers tell you the position of point A using the graph. Well, negative 4 goes left, positive 3 goes up. Part B, name the coordinates for points B and C. So B and C. So B, I go over... One, two, three, and down negative three. So it's negative three, negative three, because I went down. 
If I had gone up, it would be a positive 3, like point A. But because it's a negative and a negative, it goes with quadrant 3. Part A, you'll notice, is a negative and a positive. We've done work in quadrant 1. Those are positives and positives. And quadrant 4 will always have a positive and then a negative. So if DPAC moved from point A, so we have A, 8 units to the right and 10 units down, at what point on the graph would he end up? Which quadrant is the new point in? So we're at negative 4. He goes 8 units. So negative 4 to 4, or to 0, is 4 plus 4 more would move him here. But then he moves 10 units down. So we're at 3. There's 3 of them. We have 7 left. He would end up at negative 7. So it would be 4 comma negative 7. which is quadrant four. Now before I sign off, I forgot to do point C. So, point C is down here in quadrant four. We went over two and down six. So over two, down six. With that, that is the end of this recording. As always, if you, ha if you need help, 